Alrighty, let's go through the halftime syncopation, the halftime bass riff, the break bass riff, the break pads, and my favorite fill that I showed you earlier. So for that halftime syncopation, take a listen to that beat. The halftime beat is actually quite similar to the normal beat, with pretty much the same kick pattern and ghost notes. But the major important change is the snare. If I zoom in, you'll be able to see the snare pattern is half-timed. So you compare that one in the halftime drop to the one just before it. I've found that this is where the listener subconsciously places the tempo most often, in D&B at least. So by halving how often you place the snares, it leads to half-time syncopation. To emphasize the bass riff, I've also cut out the hi-hats on the pitch bend drop sections, which I'll discuss now. Now, for this bass riff, if we solo it out, my thinking here was, what's the bassiest thing I can get away with? So, I pitch bent down the notes when I recorded them in with my MIDI keyboard. So, let's take a quick listen to the riff. Just very simple, but pretty cool. Basically, it's just that F going down to that E, playing off that tension three times, then a quick little riff here. It goes up to the next semitone in the key, the first semitone being the F sharp and that G, and then the second one being that B flat and B. Remember, semitones make for evil tension, so having two semitones gives it masses of the stuff. Another thing to take note is that for the first half, I've got more of a tripped up syncopation. So if we take a look at that close up, listen to the difference between these two little bars. This one's more of a sharp, stuttery syncopation. This is achieved by using smaller notes, and by removing this last note here, you can see it's 1 16th further across than this one. It's crazy how much this changes the feel of the riff, so I wanted to show you that. Okay, so the bass riff in the break is pretty much the same thing repeated. It's this playing off the uh, semitone tension again and also that tension from the E down there. But also occasionally goes up the octave, goes up to the octave above F sharp. Very simple since the filtering takes the focus at this point. Okay, the pads in the break are quite cool. I'll play them now, just... Going from that pretty third to a minor second to just hitting the single note at the end there, which I think is quite a cool bit of tension, but then releases that tension when it hits the single note. Then, if we follow it along, it builds the tension a bit more with this minor second that's just held down through that whole section there. And then at the end, Again, it hits that single note just before it lets go. So any tail on the effect is in key with the song. And lastly, I'll show you that fill that I really like. You might think it's pretty arrogant to like your own music this much, but if you don't, then why are you making it? Anyway, I've literally picked random out of key notes and just gone down the chromatic scale in time to a stuttered syncopation of the beat. So check it out. I love how it goes straight from that into that second bass too. It's like it's dodging a load of bullets, then jumping high in the air over the people firing them, then kicking them in the back of the head and carrying on running. Not sure why people would want to shoot this beat, but hey ho. Oh, and another thing, quite important. Um, I added more H's to the shh since I thought it needed it. And okay, that's it. An arrangement that flows like a British middle-class white kid's rap flow, yo. Some filtering that adds more interest to the track than putting mines on an F1 course. And some notes more painful sounding than that description I made at the end of day 5. Time for you to finish the musical side of the production, then join me tomorrow for day 7 of the 7 day song, where I'll go through the mixing and mastering, then play you the final finished 7 day song. Take it easy guys.